Hi there, I'm Jim Woodburn, Chief Orbital Scientist at AGI, and I'm here today to talk to you about some of the new upgrades we have in our operationally proven Orbit Determination Toolkit, or ODTK version 7.7. .7. So let's jump right in. Um, version 7.7 .7 brings us a few significant features. Um, the GNSS antenna phase center offsets and phase center variations is going to be the main subject of this talk, so I'm going to hold off on saying any more about that at the moment. We also added an initial geolocation of surface vehicles feature, which basically takes the initial geolocation feature, which had previously come out uh, attached to facility objects, and adds that onto a surface vehicle as well, right? So it's it's just taking that same type of capability of using TDOA measurements on a ground-oriented uh, or ground-referenced object to determine its location and um, moving that from a fixed facility to a moving rover. Um, we also added a new measurement type called bi-static ground FDOA. This is complementary to the bi-static ground TDOA that was previously uh, added to the product, um, so the FDOA adds basically range rate information um, in addition to the range difference information that we had seen uh, with the TDOA. And that uh, bi-static um, geometry is shown over here on the right where the way this particular measurement model works is we have a transmitter here, imagine something like a radio station, um, and we have a receiver over here which has both direct line of sight to the transmitter and can also see a target satellite object where the signal uh, from the transmitter is going direct to the receiver and then also coming up and bouncing off the uh, target satellite and going back down to the receiver. And so it's those two legs that we use to um, compute a difference of the frequency on. And then finally we added a space-based one-way Doppler feature, uh, which is simply we have a target satellite here which is transmitting, and we have a tracker satellite here, which is uh, monitoring that transmission from the target satellite and computing uh, Doppler on the carrier signal from the target satellite, but in a one-way sense, meaning that it only goes from the target to the tracker. It's not turned around and sent back, so we have to deal with the clock phenomenology um, of the target satellite and the tracker satellite in order to be able to process this measurement. So. In addition to uh, the, the larger features, we also added a few more minor features uh, to 7.7. .7. Um, we uh, augmented the GNSS Navigation Solution IOD capability with some supplemental information, and so you can see over here on the right, um, what what we did was we simply added a little bit of uh, data that describes the information content that's being used in the um, IOD. So the way GNSS Navigation Solution IOD works is that we start with raw GNSS pseudo range measurements. Um, at some number of time points, we use those uh, raw measurements to perform navigation solutions. So that gives us the location of a satellite at a number of different time points. Um, and then we use that uh, kind of ephemeris um, in order to compute a position and velocity at a single time point. And the supplemental information that we've added here describes how many satellites are being used uh, in terms of the minimum number of available, maximum number of available satellites, and then also the geometric dilution of precision bounds on the uh, time nodes that we've used in the uh, IOD. So it gives you a little bit of situational awareness as to how good you might expect your IOD to be based on the, the time points that you've selected. Um, we also added the ability to import and export multiple objects simultaneously. Um, pretty simple, you just multi-select. And then finally, a, a kind of a niche feature here, um, satellite orbit error covariance relative to an estimated central body. So this is really a, a very specific feature to people who are uh, looking to estimate um, both a satellite and an asteroid, for example. So you have a, a satellite mission to an asteroid, and um, you might initially have your satellite represented in sun-centered coordinates, 
um, while it's on its way to the asteroid, but still taking something like OPNAV measurements of the asteroid. And so you can build up a, um, a correlation between the satellite state and an estimated correction to the asteroid state. And this allows you to, to then um, uh, pull out the satellite ephemeris relative to the asteroid, in, including the effects of those correlations. So we'll get into the, the meat of the, the presentation now, talking about um, upgrades of ODTK relative to the GNSS satellite antenna phase center offset and variations. So we have a picture here of a G, GPS uh, 2F satellite. You can see all this stuff on the top is the antenna array. And we see that over here represented um, in a, just a simple diagram showing the locations of the helical antenna elements. You have an outer ring and an inner ring of, of antenna elements. So unlike a lot of antennas that we're used to dealing with, this is not just like a, a, a single element antenna, right? All of these elements go together to form the, the beam pattern. And as such, the, um, there are variations in the antenna pattern that uh, occur depending on what direction you're coming into the, um, into the antenna from. And so um, this new capability in ODTK is meant to allow you to uh, both model the mean phase center offset. So this is where the kind of the average phase center of the antenna is relative to the origin of the spacecraft reference frame. And then also to allow you to model variations in that phase center based on the direction of the incoming signal. So the way we do this is that we use uh, data files that are published by the International GNSS Service, or IGS. Um, they produce high quality uh, ephemerities and clock solutions along with the antenna phase center solutions that um, are the recent addition to, to ODTK. So the reason that this is important is that the antenna phase centers are uh, the correct reference point when you're processing raw GNSS measurements. So that would be either pseudo range or carrier phase um, processing. So knowing the, the exact location of those phase centers and how they vary uh, is important to get the, the absolute best accuracy you can out of the orbit determination program. Um, and these antenna uh, phase center variations and mean offsets are available in a Antex file format from the IGS. And so what we've added to ODTK is the ability to ingest that Antex file and directly pull these uh, mean phase, phase center offsets and variations out. This uh, gives you a little bit of a, um, a quick guide to where to get the IGS data files. Um, you can get the Antex uh, data files from the top link here. And just a reminder, these are the ones that contain the mean phase centers and the uh, phase center variations for the GNSS satellites. Um, there's a kind of a current time file. And then if you want historical files, those are available as well. And then they also provide um, SP3 files, which contain the uh, ephemeris solutions for the GNSS satellites, along with coarse co uh, clock solutions. Um, there's also a, a finer granularity clock solution that's available as well. Um, and then um, there's a site here that describes all these various uh, data products. So at this point, I'm going to just jump over to ODTK quickly and show you where, where you use these um, uh, various data products in ODTK. Now, um, this is a very simple ODTK scenario where we have a GPS constellation defined a single satellite with a GNSS receiver on board. Um, and when we come over here and look at the properties of the GPS constellation, there's a few things that are of interest. There's a catalog file here. And this catalog file, um, describes the, uh, the various characteristics of uh, all of the GNS or all of the GPS satellites in this particular case, uh, including uh, the offsets for the phase centers. However, um, you know, sometimes these are updated, uh, you know, more frequently, let's say, than ODTK releases. 
Um, and so what we're trying to do with this new feature is allow you to, a mechanism to get more timely updates on these in addition to the phase center variations, which are not included in the, the GPS catalog file. And then if we look down a little bit here, um, we see that our source data is coming from an SP3 format, and we have the ability to specify one or more SP3 files to provide the ephemeris and coarse clock solutions for this particular analysis. And then go down a little bit farther, and you can see that I've specified that I want to override the uh, coarse clock solutions with a finer granularity clock solution. Um, this can be helpful for improving the accuracy of your analysis because unlike the orbits, uh, the, the clocks are not really predictable. So having a finer granularity solution um, is useful when you're processing data in between the nodes uh, contained in the, the coarser solution. And then if we go down a little bit farther, you'll see an ephemeris reference uh, section here, which describes um, how the, uh, the ephemeris information should be interpreted. So in this case, I'm saying that the, what the ephemeris is producing or is providing is the center of mass location, and I want to apply antenna offsets to get the mean antenna phase centers. And then this is a new option here. Um, where do I want to get those antenna offsets? Right now it's set to the catalog file, but the new option is actually to choose an Antex file that we described earlier. Uh, that allows me to you know, select a particular Antex file to use uh, for this analysis, and it also gives me the option to model the phase center variations that are included in the Antex file. So once I have all of this configured, now I'm ready to go and uh, you know, use ODTK to get the best possible accuracy I can uh, doing my GNSS uh, observation-based orbit determination. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this quick demo and you get a chance to check out ODTK version 7.7 .7 soon.